Hello, Reject Nation. It's Greg Alba here. And I'm John. And I'm Andrew. Andrew! Nice tone. I like it. Boom. Andrew from the Movie Source channel is here with us today. This man loves a good Star Wars movie. He loves movies in general, so why don't you go follow this guy? We passed 2150 followers in Stardust. Hell yeah! Thank you guys for following us on that app down in the link of follow us first. Is this our chance right now to say that Stardust was used in a Star Wars film? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a spoiler talk today. You know, it's all spoilers, so if you get mad at us in the comments, you're an idiot. If you haven't seen Star Wars and you're watching this video to just spread the spoilers around, that sucks. That sucks. That is a bad thing to do. I also know I can't do anything about it. So guys, I figure we start small. Luke dies at the end of this movie. <laughs> Honestly, from the very beginning, I had a feeling I was gonna love this movie. When the opening sequence started. The humor bit that I feel like a lot of people have been touching on is specifically with General Hux and Poe in the beginning of this film. General Hux is giving like typical villain speech. Poe just is acting like, hey, can I speak to Hux please? You know? <laughs> still on hold. Yeah, still on hold. It was hilarious. It was really yeah, funny. I think that was pretty it it was a little bit like, whoa, is this gonna be that movie? Is it gonna be a funny movie? It also really reminded me of the beginning of The Force Awakens when Kylo Ren is up close with uh, Poe and he's like, so who talks first? Do I talk first? Do you yeah. talk first? So yeah. <laughs> kind of just like set the tone again with that, that humoristic side. And I also looked at it not just from a humoristic perspective, I looked at it as an inte intellectual uh, perspective. Like he was stalling him. Like it's it was an interesting plan, and smart plan. Yeah. And I love how at the That's end- That's why like, it works. Yeah, and, yeah. and I love how at the end, the commander or whoever says to General Officer, you're being played. Like it's like, it, it's the it's a good yeah. satisfying payoff and to see General X's face like when he knows he got played like it, it worked yeah. And while it is a self-aware joke, it still comes from the character of Poe We know him to yeah. have something of a sense of humor in these situations Because I've heard people say that they felt some of the humor was off in this movie And I really didn't feel that and I, and I feel like kind of explaining that one opening sequence says a lot about this film. Did you find any of the humor to be off? I, I can't think of a specific moment. Where I, I was I, like this is off. I didn't feel any of it was forced I just felt it was organic forced <laughs> no, yeah, no pun intended. Ah! God, yeah, see what I did there? <laughs> Joke. Uh, drink! No pun intended, I didn't feel like it was forced. I felt like it was very organic in this film. And I'll definitely say this, there is a lot more humor in this than most Star Wars films, for sure. And that's gonna yeah. take some people getting used to because they're not used to seeing humor of this level. But on the other side, it does work in the context of the film. Yeah, if it's I just, actually funny. Too. Yeah, and it, yeah. it's again, it's very <laughs> organic. I can see what people are on about with this one. That was a thing about the first part of this movie that took me some getting used to. And the, and the thing is, I laughed at all the jokes. It's that yeah. kind of laugh where you furrow your brow because you're like, I'm surprised this is this is here. But yeah. uh, after the scenes played out and I got used to the tone, I, I do look back having enjoyed the humor, but I can definitely see uh, why yeah. some people are not about it. I think when you adjust to it, you realize that it's fine. I feel it's like on a, a second viewing, I feel like any time it felt off would feel like it's not off on a second viewing. Because I yeah. love the moment too. Luke gets the lightsaber and it cuts to Luke with the lightsaber because there's all that buildup. Oh, mm -hmm. and you just... <laughs> Just chucks it. That yeah. was, I was like, and I did not expect that. Yeah, because yeah, you're like, oh, this is gonna be a. Very What's he gonna say? Yeah. What's he gonna say? Well, and again, that's another one of those jokes that is of the character, so I can't really fault the movie. For yeah, that. And yeah, like it is totally unexpected. Just <laughs> toss it. It's hilarious. You know? and, there yeah. was, and there was one too where, like, the fight later with him and Kylo, where uh, he's using the Force to project himself and. And he does that, yeah. you know, he wipes off his shoulder. And again, that's not even, he's not even saying anything. He's just, he's just taunting him because he badass, knows yeah. that he's gonna, he's gonna like go ape shit. Yeah. You know? yeah. The interactions between him and Chewie and then him and R2, like that was a cheap shot. You know, with yeah. Joe and Leia, like those are good, uh, again, organic humoristic moments. I kind of feel like this movie's with its humor segued away into learning more about what the force really is all about from an emotional aspect. Cause I was thinking about that scene when you went reach out and she literally Really reaches out Ray when she's meditating oh, right, and he right, starts yeah. touching her with the and it's like I can feel something yeah, like, that's, that's it that's the force because I think about the force awakens where Han that's not how the force works yeah, yeah. I feel like this movie as compared to previous Star Wars movies has a, a broad tone that is somewhat uh, heavier at yeah. certain points more kind of heart wrenching mm -hmm. that I'm used to in some of the past installments. Yeah. Maybe not from the, from the originals as much, but uh, they, they rang true here. Well, the reason I want to talk about the, the beginning, though, is that opening battle sequence, I was already being sold that this could possibly be the best looking Star Wars movie. That Even if the movie a, doesn't yeah. play out great by the scene is done, this is going to be 
one of the best looking Star Wars movies because there are, are some, I feel like a lot of times in the battle sequences in these movies, it's easy to kind of just remember it all as a blur. When I watch this movie though, I can remember like specific shots with Rose's sister when uh, she's trying kicking. to get rid of the bombs, that she's whole kicking. sequence yeah. of intensity, how I was invested in this woman, attention. I don't know. That made me yeah. a hero. Yeah, it was, it was heartbreaking. And, yeah. and you didn't know exactly what the half of the medallion was. And then the connection to the other sister was a, br I thought that was brilliant because who the hell was expecting to find this storyline that was so touching in the and, film? And to add you on that scene you were just talking about with Rose's sister, the way like you think it's dropped into space and then she catches it yeah. the way the camera worked. like it's it was really intense yeah. and a lot of tension filled moments in that specific scene so yeah I appreciate that too about characters you don't really know a lot about you're still feeling that that investment that tension like you don't want something you know harmful yeah. to happen to them so I appreciated that as well a lot people love to touch on Rogue One as being a war movie yeah but this movie really did feel like both in its handling of the action and its use of it in the the plot it always felt like the stakes were, were huge and they orchestrated those battle sequences really well to the point where maybe the most lucidly during a Star Wars experience I've sat there and gone, yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. I, I feel that, you know? Especially those dogfights out in space, the beginning one, the stuff with the escape pods later. That is all one area and it evolves, you know? They yeah. jump once in hyperspace, but for all intents and purposes, that's one battle of yeah. this war. And you watch it unfold and there are different kinds of fights inside of that. I remember one of the most visually impressive of shots I've seen in any Star Wars movie when Laura Dern's character Vice Admiral Bull Hordor Ad <laughs> Vice Admiral hey. Holdo she sacrificed herself and yeah. you treat her with that name but that scene where she does sacrifice herself which by the way I thought was great oh, was because amazing, when, the, when Laura Dern was first in this movie I was like oh you just showed up to be like the bitchy character then when Leia wakes up and she has that whole relationship established with Leia we're like oh they actually like each other <laughs> they're not like enemies well, or something and then when Laura Dern sacrifices yeah. herself makes the jump to hyperspace. That shot with the sound design and the different cuts they used and the way it was executed. Or the, was, ooh, the not sound. I yeah. Mean, that, that was, that's that was, what it was. such it was, a gripping yeah. moment because it's like you're in space. for the first <laughs> yeah. time, it's just nothing. Yeah. That sequence is one of the most striking visual sequences. Oh, wow. Like I was caught up in that. Yeah. Like that's one of the most memorable movie moments of the year for me. Yeah. We were in a press screening and the whole entire audience gasped. Yeah. Everybody that went, moment. whoa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it was definitely, it was visually very appealing but I, I I think like what I obviously the visual is what I appreciate the most but I also appreciate it from a story perspective like her sacrifice like what she was doing in the moment like it was very well earned yeah. and like it was like the emotional uh, feeling that you get towards her character making the sacrifice like it really like it really paid off in that moment on top of the incredible visuals that we got in that yeah in that moment it just really blended and worked together movie. Holdo is like a new character you get to experience from the outside and I love that the movie sort of lets you sit there for the first part and go I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like this person very much and yeah. then by the end of it you're like ah I see you like you're a fully yeah. developed poised you're character some they didn't have some twist where she's like corrupt or something or, yeah and or it's she's like, really working with the uh, the first order yeah I, and it gives you reasons to doubt her you know yeah. over time and you make these decisions with Poe a lot of the time and I and I like that the movie doesn't ever it gives you the credit and just lets you believe for a little yeah. bit and then it it unfolds I don't read the comics or know a lot about the EU very much but I I do know that uh, her character Holdo, uh, her and Leia were actually childhood friends. See, but, you but, could pick up on that kind of friendship but, and the way uh, their performances yeah. But were. I don't, yeah. but they gave you hints of that. It's I all within were... the performances of those yeah. two actresses right then and there. I feel like the way you really go into spoilers about this is talking about the characters' journeys in this film. Which is a good thing. Which is a great thing. Makes the job a lot easier. Thing, too. I think for me, I liked Pose personally. That was your I, favorite storyline? That was one of my favorites. Like, just his arc in terms of... Saving like, his wife and daughter from the Empire and yes, all that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like in the beginning of this film, all he wants to do is he kind of, he just wants to fight through everything. He wants to, you know, he's all about destroying in order to, to achieve victory. And it's an understandable trait for someone who's the greatest pilot in the galaxy. Yeah. I like, you know, through Leia slaps and on all the speech and the moral speeches he gets, like he sees throughout the film, you know, maybe I'm not taking the proper approach well, to this. And so I, I liked how his character matured and his arc that he went through and the progression that his character went through. I thought it was very well earned and I just appreciated where they took the character towards the end of the film. Like, yeah. I really see the change in this character and it's like like this I, I like where they took the, this character from the beginning of the film to the end of the film from the beginning of The Force Awakens to where we are now and I, I really also appreciated how they use this character a lot more smarter in this film than in the previous film yeah I felt like Leia's story coincided a lot with Poe's specific sure. story well because yeah. she's his example of leadership like real yeah. leadership and that you know she raises that theme beyond that 
what I thought was really fascinating was this whole time we've been kind of setting up Poe like he's the new Han Solo in some way. Leia back then, you know, falls in love with Han Solo. She, young Leia would have fallen in love with with, uh, with a Poe type <laughs> of guy. And now this time around, she's really grown up and she's really mature. Now she's sort of mentoring the younger Han Solo who, who gets these like life lessons about being the hot shot hothead ain't exactly always the Good best man, thing yeah. to do. It ain't exactly always the coolest thing to do, you know? Well, I like that this movie of all movies chose to, to take up that kind of a storyline because, you know, in a day and age where Chris Pratt plays Han Solo in like three different <laughs> franchises now, like it's nice to watch a movie like this that is responsible for creating so much of our blockbuster cinema sit down and go, you know, we can't always do Han Solo because that doesn't actually always help us win a war. Yeah. Yeah. And you made a great point. I love what you just said about how she's mentoring him and her husband was exactly the type of uh, character he is. But mm -hmm. I, I think one little baby grape I had that I would have liked, I mean, didn't really matter. It wasn't the end of the world, but she took away his status so as captain or commander or whatever yeah. he was. Yeah, she demoted him, but I would, I, I think I would have liked, just again, me personally, just a little payoff at the end where, uh, at the end where he's finally like, uh, you know, kind of accepted more of this mature way of thinking in terms of in battle, you get that path of her saying command, like giving him the the yeah. the, the, re, the pre back to the promotion of back where he was. You see that the characters are like finally you've learned. So like yeah. I, I just would have yeah. appreciated like that little moment payoff there. I don't know. I mean, I, I felt like by the time they got to the end of this movie, they didn't really care about. Well, I was gonna say yeah, they <laughs> don't. You don't. I know. I'm just, like, I'm just talking. I'm just, just wanted to no, be no, no. From, from a story <laughs> perspective, you're right. I just mean that character moment. Did yeah. that like of Leia saying you've matured. I'm so proud of wh where you've come from what we've talked about earlier to where you've well, come now. Maybe like it, it'll just... be in a Warner Brothers extended cut of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Leia, really love the way she was handled in this film. I love the resemblance she just had to how Carrie Fisher actually is. Yeah. They didn't try making her dialogue sound like how young Leia talked. You sound like how Carrie Fisher sounds when I hear interviews, you know, except a lot less vulgar, you mm -hmm. know, but she's still got yeah. that like, come on, grow up, kid, you know? Like, yeah, she, she, yeah. Looks, she seems like she's been around for a while. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that carries over to Luke, too. Like, yeah. it's cool that they let them age not only physically, obviously, but in personality. Well, well, I think why it works is because by this point, Leia should be a character where you just see it in her eyes, she's a woman of experience. And Carrie Fisher has that same demeanor, or had that same demeanor of just, she's a woman who's lived and has an ex life experience. So just translating that works perfectly for who General Leia is. There's one moment, though, that I just can't seem to figure out. I haven't even looked it up. Can't figure it out. Yeah, yeah. When when she died, because my when first, she, like, I thought she died. and I then is freezing out in well, the vacuum of space. Well, how do you feel, Andrew, when you thought she died? Because I didn't like that when I well, thought she died. I personally thought it happened too soon. Yeah. And if uh, at, in the moment, and then when she, she was used, like first that. I mean, <laughs> I, I was very happy. Yeah, I was very happy that she survived. I still don't know how I feel about the whole force. Like again, visually, it was really, it was very interesting to see a different perspective of someone using the force in a different way. Yeah. You know, because we don't always have to do the same exact thing. It's really cool to see other different abilities that you can do while using the force. You know, from that perspective, it was interesting, but. I still don't know how I feel. You know, I don't want to be negative, but I don't know how I feel yet about how she force flew and then came back to life. Maybe if you're a hardcore, intense Star Wars, Wars fan, you'll get it. I feel like I'm encountering a lot of people who are like, I honestly don't get what happened. Yeah, there, was, you know? was, well, that's one of the things that actually took me out of the movie because I, I didn't actually hate the moments leading up to that, that whole strange moment between her and Kylo. And now I guess in, in, in retrospect, seeing the way they use other uh, aspects of the force later on, in the movie maybe they were like legit seeing each other or something like that but that that moment kind of caught me up and I was thinking this is a, a big movie with lots of moving parts lots of characters yeah. if this is the time maybe this is it they're spending a lot of time looking at her so the idea of her death didn't bug me and then when she woke up I was kind of like huh and then she floats back and it actually took me out of the stakes. I was like, oh, cool, Leia's safe, whatever. You know, really? Like, that, that, that didn't do that to me. It, I thought it was- I didn't, It didn't have the triumph that I, they clearly wanted. It just felt like a deus ex machina to me. I was part but, of the crowd and I, 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 I felt it too though. After a while went on and then I realized this movie's never gonna explain what the hell went on, then I was like questioning it. But in, that, in the moment when it happened, I was actually like, oh sweet, Leia's awesome, you know? 
Uh, I guess I, I missed out on the awesome part. I got the relief of like, oh good, she's still alive because I want to keep on watching her. But in a in a in a couple movies that now are, are taking time to dissect the force a bit yeah. in a movie, <laughs> following up, that's not how the force works. That's one example in this movie where I'm like, how does the force work? <laughs> yeah. Does this possible? And I'm sure somebody can. Well, tell I was gonna me, say, but... like, does that mean Luke in the Empire Strikes Back when he was gonna fall? You know, in the in Cloud City, could yeah. he have just used his like the force like that and just floated yeah. somewhere? I, I I don't know. Like, well, and I mean, you're in the vacuum of space, so yeah, I guess no, anti gravity. I, 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 I get, can, yeah, yeah. No. In pulling, you're probably also propelling. I'd say like in the moment, like I was cheering too because finally we get to see Leia using the force from that perspective. And in the moment, it was really cool and visually it was really appealing to see. But they didn't really make an explanation. I, I think that would have helped ease me a little bit more. And again, yeah. not getting too negative, but I, I would have appreciated just again just some kind of an explanation just what exactly happened. It was nice to see that she survived, obviously. Yeah. Like, I, I was happy about that. Obviously, it wasn't the death that was gonna bother me. It was just where it happened in the film. Like, because we were still pretty early on in True, the film yeah. at that point. So, I did think she was gonna die in the film. I just didn't think it would have happened that early. In terms of her dying in that way, even. Not not just the time, but just in that way would have upset me. A, trailers pretty much gave that away. Because I know Kylo doesn't shoot her, which was awesome on Kylo's part. But it's like, okay, but this the people he's that flying with killed. good moment too, yeah. yeah and the other part about it is i would have felt like oh man there was so much i wanted to see of it because they really utilize han a lot in force awakens but i was really excited to see carrie fisher too but she's barely in it so i was like i would hate it if she's barely in the movie so mm -hmm. that's in terms of the time part and the other part is like well she just died there i'd be like well that sucks because she never got a scene with luke and it really bothered me that Han and Luke didn't get a scene together. True. And and now I'm like, True. oh, it's great. Now Carrie, Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill don't get a scene together. <laughs> Everything yeah. you just said is exactly how I felt about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is a great point, actually. I still <laughs> wish we could have gotten all three of them together in one scene, but... Yeah, Force cool. Ghost Han. <laughs> Force Ghost Han. <laughs> Do it. Hey, kid. What's going on? <laughs> this is how the Force works. <laughs> Han's just teaching force he's class. Really great. Even even when he's using the force, he's grumpy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that scene with Leia and, and Luke. Oh god, it was so, oh. so cool to oh, just yeah. see them so together. together. With Luke's story, that was so rewarding. Because that out of all the stories they had to nail, it was this story they had to nail. And I think the film also clearly shows that Ryan Johnson's most personal investment was in the in the Kylo and Ray and Ray and Luke story. Yeah. Like you could tell that's where his main passion of this story was at cuz it all circles around that story. Oh yeah. yeah. Well and and it's magical to see Luke, emotional too. Luke Skywalker. It feels like a different Star Wars movie and yet we we've got Luke back. Yeah. For real, the whole ma like master and pupil dynamic that he sets up with Rey is awesome because it's it's atypical. Like that's reminiscent in ways of like Luke training with Master Yoda and all that. But the whole crux of, of it is he doesn't want to do it, and it's all about him trying to convince her not to. They kind of try, and it doesn't go so well. And he also has to face his trauma. Like Luke yeah. has a, such a big character growth in here because he's traumatized. He's lost his faith. He doesn't even practice using the force. He lives in isolation, protecting old books. I mean, the trailers, I guess, in a sense, do kind of ruin that impact because while people theorize Luke might be a little bit like that in The Last Jedi, when you're watching The Force Awakens, and even when you get to Luke, you're not thinking, oh, he's a grumpy old guy who's given up on the force and, and like he doesn't want to train Rey and all that stuff. It's like, you feel you're, you're more like, what is he doing there? You yeah. know? Well, they, and then that's yeah. why that moment where he just throws a lightsaber like, the oh, he just doesn't want to do this. <laughs> yeah. And I like the lifestyle he was living. I like how they took time to show here's how he's been surviving on this island. Too. Still drinking yeah. blue yeah. milk. He, Still he drinking, hunts the blue the drinking the blue milk. That creature show is such out a funny ass boobs, moment. Out of its yeah. tits. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice moment. I like that. And, um, Mark, and Mark Hamill's a funny guy, so I like that they allowed him to, to do the mixture of humor with a, a darker interpretation of Luke Skywalker. Yeah, well, and, and at this point in their life after, it's funny to watch new heroes rise while older heroes are still around. And and yeah. the, the more I think about that, the more that makes sense. Dude, I'm like, yeah, by this point, Luke would have a, a, a bit of an attitude, I'm sure. I know this version of Luke Skywalker isn't the Luke Skywalker we all remembered growing up. However, yeah. in terms of performance, old man Luke is Mark Hamill's best. <laughs> yeah, in terms of performance. It's his so Logan, yeah. man. It's his Logan. <laughs> it's his Logan. It's what it is. So, yeah. yeah, it's, it's exactly it's it was, Logan. <laughs> it was definitely an interesting choice where they took the character from where we had previously seen him in Return of the Jedi to where yeah. we have now seen him. So it's a, it's a bold choice. I, I will say 
ballsy is the word I, w I was looking for, but bold is a good one too. Yeah, I really think there's going to be a lot of people who are divisive on how they feel about where they took Luke because he's definitely not the same like uh, the yeah. Jedi we left off in Return of the Jedi. It's not like, hey, he's going off on kick-ass adventures. He's going to go fight Snoke. He's going to go with Rey. He's going to go fight with yeah. uh, Kylo. Don't expect that. Like, that's not exactly what's happening here. And, you know, we go more into a personal traumatized story with, obviously you mentioned he's not, you know, handling, uh, dealing with the faith anymore or with uh, the force anymore. He doesn't believe in his in his religion mm -hmm. anymore or anything. He's lost total faith. But I thought they took an interesting approach where, you know, uh, when they showed the flashbacks of how he lost Ben, where he started seeing moments of darkness in uh -huh. him. And I'm, I'm surprised that, like, the, it was interesting that, you know, the character, when he saw that his father had turned to the dark side, he tried talking him down and turning him to the light. And I found it interesting that they didn't use that with Luke where he maybe tries talking, you know, Ben. But I did appreciate the moment where he's like, he's he felt wrong in what he was doing. He let fear take over yeah. and said, and that's, that's like a path to the dark side. And I really did theorize that they were going to go more the gray Jedi route in this. The gray Jedi, basically, it's where you teeter on the edge of dark, uh, on the dark side, but you're still, you know, you still uh, maintain that edge and you, you don't fully embrace the dark side, but you, you know, you have light and dark, uh, yeah. you know, inside of you. I'm surprised they didn't go that route, but there were definitely some, you know, interesting choices made yeah. and ballsy choices made. Well, the fact that they let his character grow into an arc that I'm sure we all saw coming. Because even when, like, all hope seems lost in the finale, I, I think I looked over at John, like, where's Luke? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then Luke showed up. I'm like, there we go. Yeah. And I'm like, I wanted that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. like, I want Luke to show up and save the day. Oh, and the yeah. way he shows up is Satisfying. magical for yeah. a bunch of different reasons. And that's one of those mumbo jumbo -er moments of the force that I thought actually did work as yeah. he like projects himself out there. That's how powerful he is with the force. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, and a whole lightsaber fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that whole fight is, is, is I like fantastic. how they handle that fight like a samurai battle. Yeah. yeah. It was like a actual samurai battle mm -hmm. also too i liked the the moment the hints that they were giving you that luke wasn't actually there first of all his haircut i was thinking in the moment did he have time to go yeah. get a <laughs> did he, did he go visit a, bear, a barber darker? yeah he like he, he dyed his hair color like that? hey i gotta go fight kylo i need a haircut <laughs> right. right now so like i stopped off for some yeah, just also, for men is this a reshoot <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also too i did notice you know uh, on the planet crate whenever you make a step i love the, the shots that uh, ryan johnson was creating whenever you take a step you'd see the, the red, red. Yeah. The, red, the red mineral salt, so that was really awesome uh, visual storytelling with how that planet worked. When Luke was walking, I didn't notice any of the yeah. footprints that he was creating. I'm like, is he here? What, yeah, what's going smart. on? Like, it was, there were, he was giving you hints there. You just had to really pay attention yeah. to it. I thought I that whole finale had a great blend of proper fan service serving the plot. Yeah. Because that was like Luke showing up to save the day. We all wanted that, and, and, and that's what we get. You know? and, and, that, he yeah. needs to do that. and he needs to do that. And he needs to do that as a character. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talk about theories all the time. I'm pretty sure this is obvious that Mark Hamill is going to come back as a Force Ghost or Luke Skywalker. But I kind of hope you, not. Really? I kind of hope he does. Do you think that? Do you think focal? Do you way. think I can handle it? If do you it's think just that line mind. though, where he says to your round kid, do you think that was maybe a foreshadowing of him as a force ghost with Kylo Ren, or do you think just him in general see you around? Well, he said something to him beforehand, right? If you strike me down in anger, I will. I'll, I'll, haunt you I'll, I'll stay. I'll stay with you forever, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. That's why he says, "See you around, kid." Yeah, exactly. yeah. Because yeah. he's like, "I'm in your head now." <laughs> Yeah. Whether you like it or not, you gotta live with yourself. And two, dude, that moment where all the everyone's firing at him, boom, 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 yeah, boom, and then and that. then he did, and then he just walks off yeah. and, and does uh, that. But I like two General Hot. Uh, we haven't really talked about General Hot, where he's like, stop firing, like that's yeah. enough. He's like, do you think you got him again? Yeah. That just built adds more to that. Only humor. Kylo knows we didn't get him. I, yeah. I like that they finally gave Hux like a joke because yeah. he's such a bitch most of the yeah. time, and like that seems to be the point. I, don't know, I, I like how they wrote that character to just the be brunt of a lot one. of comic relief because I would prefer this version of General Hux over the whatever version of General Hux oh totally, 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 totally. Force I'm like yeah make him a bitch well, yeah he fun. was more into big speeches uh, in that film and not that he wasn't a bit of a film. bitch in that movie too yeah. <laughs> one has to ask themselves you know like Oscar Isaac was a supporting character of Ex Machina Don Juan Gleason was the lead in terms of male and now it's very evident that Oscar Isaac has a much bigger role in this franchise that they're both starring in together do you think they have tension they don't even have scenes together. I mean, they had a scene together, but they're not over the same over the speaker. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, <laughs> just like an ex mock. And now he's being played a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not a big fan when they when studios make the idea to like pass the baton, mm -hmm. and I think the franchise is handling that super well in terms of like you get Han in there, he interacts with uh, Ray and Finn a lot, and in this movie with Luke and Leia's presence in this film. Remember what we all got excited for with Force Awakens was 
to see the old stars return, you know? It's not about that anymore. I'm like, man, it's that Ray and Luke's, it's Ray's story, it's Kylo Ren's story, you know? Like, these stories I'm also excited to keep on going with now. The scenes with Luke and Kylo when they're going back to the past, I like how that was handled, how that was also intertwining how her relationship with Kylo was forming. Well, yeah, this movie does a, it, it's smart that they let uh, arguments and information trickle out and go back and forth. You know, yeah. and, and uh, the truth about Luke and Kylo's history is a great example of that. Because yeah. first you have, you know, one idea about like, ah, Kylo was just out of control. And yeah. then you have like the, ah, Luke really did something horrible. And then you have the gray and, and it bothers yeah. to go to all three places. There's your gray Jedi right there. Because I like that moment. Like, oh, he did whip out his lightsaber, but he chose in that moment not to be. Like he was realizing like, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah. it wasn't just, oh, he was going to do it. It's well, what else was there to that situation? Yeah. Why? What did which just triggered Kylo to the end, and then psh, that story with Kylo and Rey, though, it was really good. Oh man, that I wasn't expecting this part of the story to be arguably the more the most intriguing part to me, perhaps actually. Not the most enjoyable part, but the most intriguing part. Because when they're first talking to each other, when they first see each other, I love the way that was built up. And I love how this movie does explore the gray in like every area. It's more than just, Kylo might be a good guy, guys. It's, it's way more than that. Kylo, yeah. I, they embrace, through Kylo most of all, they embrace yeah. chaos. They say like there's there's chaos within him right now. Like there's debate. Yeah. And that there's is- conflict. Conflict. They really they, say that word. <laughs> and I yeah. love the way they orchestrated uh, their scenes together. Yeah. Vis Visually, at least. Snoke, did he say at some point that he's the one who yeah, made them have Yeah, he's the one who So why he didn't connect, he just find Rick? <laughs> I'm like that. That's that's a nitpick that did kind of subtract a little bit, but but overall, I love the way those scenes were orchestrated. You're understanding why Ray is even siding with Kylo, and I love how this movie deals with that plot. By the time you get to the scene where Ray is uh, held captive and she's in front of Snoke, mm -hmm. and Snoke's like beating the shit out of her while he's also like destroying the rebellion at the same time, yeah, reminded yeah. me so much of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, and it was interesting because you're like, oh, you're getting like the Return of the Jedi homage here in the second one yeah. <laughs> you know so they're not doing the this exact structure and that's why I, I love the idea of how they keep going familiar now we're gonna flip it familiar now we're gonna change it you know and that aspect in and of itself almost made uh, me feel better about the force awakens because I, I started to wonder if maybe the part of the arc of this trilogy is to go okay let's remind you about where we came from and do a similar yeah. story to that and now this one's all about how not all of that stuff's gonna work anymore yeah. not all the old ways are relevant yeah. anymore we yeah. need new approaches it feels like they had a trilogy that's actually really thought out I would right? I agree with that and I would also say they heard some of the complaints on it's a rehash of A New Hope so no, we're see, not I, I felt like that was super intentional though it's... with The Force Awakens and I feel like that's even more present because this doesn't feel like jarring tonal shift or jarring what the hell's going on with the story. It feels like, oh, this is smooth, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and then it makes it feel like, okay, the third part's probably gonna be even more different, yeah. hopefully. And it'll be an ending to this well, story, yeah. It's J.J. Abrams, so we might get an exact copy of Return <laughs> <laughs> Just on an alternate timeline, there were like two of the characters are reversed. Back to that scene, though. It's like you knew Kylo was gonna do something to help out Rey. Yeah. Like, you knew that, but I, I don't think we any of us really knew that, oh shit, Kylo's gonna kill if you Snow really watched, you saw the the lightsaber was starting to turn. Yeah, no, no, yeah. You mean before that? Before right? that, okay. I wasn't expecting him to actually like. I didn't was expect. Successful. I, I didn't thought Snoke was gonna catch that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought know. he was too, and like, because he was all in the speech, like, "You couldn't kill me," or "You minute." I for, I forgot the speech. It's kind of vague now, but he was like talking about how there's no way anyone can kill He's him. He's all and then, powerful, and you'll never stop me. And that was, <laughs> but that was so that was so cool though in that moment because I like how it toy it keeps that story going. Like, okay, what does this mean for Kyle? What does it mean for Kyle? Yeah, is, is Kyle a good yeah. guy now. What the hell's going? Is this exactly Return of the Jedi? You know, it goes into that fight. That fight is is one oh, of the awesome. another was, one of the coolest things I've seen all the, year. The guards. That was a great with fight with the Praetorian and there guards. There were some yeah. cool ass shots in that. I love that shot when she passes the lightsaber to uh, Kylo, and then he just you hear it turn on, well, and then right into the eye. Around. Yeah, it's right into the eye. That was such, and, and they all had like different kinds of weapons to fight lightsabers with. I've wanted to see a variety of different martial arts with weapons, yeah. and they provide that there in that fight. And then working together, you're like. Okay, I see where this is going. And I love how this film had like, what, an extra half hour, 40 minutes after that. It could have probably ended a, a, a few minutes later if they just made Kylo a good guy. Well, but because they don't do that, you're still like, oh my God, I love how not it, black and white this situation yeah, is with these guys. Yeah. Well, that's the fascinating thing about the trailer is everyone was freaking out about that one question. It's like, oh, oh, is it, is, is Ray gonna join Kylo? And it's like, that is kind of the 
question, but not in that way at all. Not like, like join the first order. Are yeah, they yeah. both <laughs> gonna kind of join each other on yeah. a different level? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. That's what it's so, so you're sort of thinking like, is this movie gonna end with like them doing their own thing now? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then it confronts that again. Yeah. You know, when he asks her to, to join him in ruling but, the galaxy. And I love that shot when they don't say goodbye to each other or whatever. Yeah. But but when they can see each other and then she just has the door go up. And there's two things I want to say about Snoke's death. One, I kind of viewed it as an alternative to what would have happened had Anakin Skywalker killed Obi-Wan Kenobi in Revenge of the Sith and on Mu Mustafar. He probably would have done that to the Emperor. He would have just killed him and betrayed him and done something similar to that yeah. and tried to take over the galaxy. So I kind of looked at it as an alternate version of what Anakin Skywalker would have done. This character does have a lot of resemblance to Anakin Skywalker in terms of he's conflicted with the Force. Obviously, he's got family issues in terms of, uh, you know, conflict within him. But again, just getting on the word divisive, I have a real big feeling. And I did appreciate the flipping it on its head and not something I didn't expect, but... I was just, at that moment. There was just... It was, it was, it was an incredible moment, but again, I have a feeling a lot of people are not going to like that you built up this character of, of Supreme Leader Snoke and, uh. you know, there's a lot of interesting ways you can go with this character and his backstory how did he get so powerful and <laughs> oh it's not nah. It just, it's all to the wayside. He's dead, yeah. he's gone. It just kind of feels like with the way it happens, and maybe I gotta f watch it a few more times, but it just feels like it's like not an important part of the storyline, just the way he's just like executed. And honestly, I just haven't really even cared about no. the whole, I, I know people have been theorizing and wanting to know who the hell Snoke is for so long. I've even watched videos on it. Was I looking forward to it? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to have known all that information. At the same time, I was like, I think it's clever that this movie, this franchise is not really about that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, it's fair sometimes to go, ah, that's not the point though. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and I, I had that thought for a split second in the movie theater. I was like, wow. Because so many hours of fan theory yeah. nothing. Because <laughs> Snoke is used in that moment you see that Snoke's being used right now as a purpose to serve Kylo's story. It's, it's not like Kylo's secondary bad guy now and then there's He's Snoke. The it's like they're building up our primary bad guy by the time we get to part three, which is Kylo. So I was like, that's even more clever and I think more exciting because this film did it. It got me to love Kylo. I didn't like Kylo in the first yeah. movie, but in this one, I was like, dude, I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, you're, how, you're just, a bit. how you're describing that is, it makes me feel a little bit better uh, from that, but I, I still have a feeling like people, because they were theorizing so many different things. Oh yeah, that totally exists. They're gonna, they're, <laughs> gonna, they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna get a little bit, you know, butthurt over the choice that they made and make it feel like, oh, yeah. that kind of wasn't that important or he the threat level wasn't as big with this character just because of the way he was yeah. just defeated so easily, kind of the way it seemed, even though it was a sick-ass trick that Kylo Ren pulled on him. Plus, well, now we've been robbed of another Andy Serkis performance. <laughs> <laughs> Those were some top-notch effects on him, too. Oh, the, yeah, the way the character visually looked. I think maybe that was one of my biggest... You know, things I was upset with with Snoke, and I know everyone's gonna point out in the comments, well, with Emperor Palpatine, we didn't get a lightsaber scene with him, so why are you pissed off about, you know, Snoke a little more than with him? And I don't know, it's, it's just to get, about that. I get, and I get but it, you know I get what it. we do get, and I, I thought about this in the theater, and this is what reminded me of like a Lord of the Rings caliber movie while I was watching this, is like, you have that scene with him where it's clear, like, he's running the room. She tries to summon the lightsaber, and he's like, nope, I got that. Like, yeah. you know, and brings it over here, and he didn't need to use the lightsaber for me to get his power and yeah. I like that they did that because as a supreme leader of yeah. all that is malevolent I feel like the, the th way to make him scariest is by doing it without showing him fighting. Okay fine I, I'll concede and I'll say I agree to that I think one thing I would have been pro even though I agree with everything you said I think things I would have appreciated was you know maybe some scenes where him and Kylo like he's maybe training him in yeah. the dark in the, the ways of the Sith and seeing some of those scenes play out because that was one thing I was looking forward to after The Force Awakens where he says to General Hux when Starkiller base is being destroyed. Bring me Kylo Ren. I must complete his training. And I was looking forward to seeing this some Sith training. This is not like, a TV and, show, Andrew. Yes, when they I know. Released it was the already Force <laughs> Awakens 1.5. It, it was. It was already. It, no, and I get it. This movie is 152 minutes long, which means it's 10 minutes longer than the last longest film that's ever come out, and that was Attack of the Clones. So there's a lot going on in this film, and there were definitely some moments where you know Snoke felt in, like uh, where I felt empowered by this character, but there were other things that I, again, the biggest best word I'm going to use to describe things that happened. 
happen in this film. There's gonna be lots of divisive uh, feelings from fans and other people uh, towards what happened in this film, but as it should be. From your guys' perspective, I love how you're pointing out, like, I loved how they kind of twisted and turned the tables. Like, this is, yeah. there are some things like that, you, that you'll recognize from Star Wars, and then we're gonna twist and turn it a little bit and do our own, you know, take on like, what we feel is. I, I feel like they're reminding us of, like, no, the, the heart of this story is our main characters, and that's what everything else is being used to serve, is the journey of these characters. Is that's what we'll remember and by the time something... this is all done, you know? We don't really get to know the Emperor, except for, like, the prequels, but, you know? <laughs> even then, you just go, oh, he just could, I get plot stuff about him. I gotta ask, though, what happened when Luke died? I, I, that threw me off. So he, I guess he... He just used, used up the amount of energy well, yeah, he had left forced, in Well, yeah, he was force-strained, I guess, right? They, they didn't really go a whole he lot. He achieved in light. force strains me every night. Mm, nice, buddy. Ah. I says my girlfriend force strains me every night. I figured this video could use a joke once in a while, so here yeah. I am. <laughs> I'm just here to pepper things yeah. up. Do a weird voice. I'm just here <laughs> for a punch up, you guys. <laughs> here to punch up this, this film. Oh, do a punch up. Do a punch up. Is that some jokes? <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Uh, what are we talking about? Sorry. Sorry. Did I interrupt you? I don't even remember if I interrupted you. No, or you. Or you. <laughs> I just started talking. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were on a roll, dude. Keep going. Like, <laughs> oh, Lu oh, yeah. Why did Luke? Force strain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what we're at. That threw me off. I'm like, wait, wait, why exactly did he die? Okay, I mean, I like that he died. I thought it was a good death, a well-earned death. And I love that his arc of believing in the Jedi and then passing it on to... It, it ends in a way where I'm like... Ray's even a million times cooler now because all of Luke's faith in the reason he died was because he has faith in Ray. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They were saying earlier in the film, I mean, he was saying that he did want to die. He had nothing else to live for. And, you know, he feels like he, he'd squandered and failed. You yeah. know, obviously with what happened with be or Kylo Ren, Ben Solo. And I guess like uh, Natalie right. Portman's character, she died of heartbreak. So I don't know if you need a reason yeah. to die in these movies. I mean, again, he used up uh, the, he hadn't used the force in years. So maybe that had something to do with it. Yeah, he, he didn't really he go into it stretched. <laughs> <laughs> if only he would have. I feel like that's one of those mystical things where it's just like he disappeared. He rejoined yeah. the force. Well, wherever that I mean, is. Uh, Yo I mean, obviously we saw that Yoda was at a very old age, so that's why he died. Oh, that he, Yoda he, appearance. You know what I loved about oh, that Yoda cameo? Yoda. He served a purpose. He, he served a purpose, and he was a real. And he, and he even expanded what the force means in that moment. That yeah. it's not about rules and religion and all these things. It's not about like Yoda burns it. <laughs> yeah, it's like screw Yoda's the Jedi. Like, the it's books. like the force ain't about that, man. I love that too. Yeah. It's like, have Not you about read the, the books? Forces. Which helps a lot with, yeah, yeah have you read the books? <laughs> Some people get up in arms about, you know, how does Rey so good at the force? You know, she hasn't had all the training, the proper formal training. As if she's getting into priesthood. And maybe there's still an argument to be made about that. At the same time, that uh, all that stuff with Yoda really made me go, see, it's not about, it's really just about who you are as a human being and your natural state of faith or whatever. It's oh. practical. Yeah, exactly. He, he, was, was, he, he wasn't, wasn't CGI. He wasn't CGI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the prequels made me so happy. But yeah, no, but again, I just, I love that, that, that scene. I love how they touched back to the humor on the scenes of Dagobah with Luke and Yoda. Like, I'm not gonna say a recreation, but just the recreation of the, the awesome feeling we had whenever we'd see these characters interact with each other in Empire yeah. Strikes Back. It wasn't just like the, the moment that made you feel like, you know, uh, nostalgic, but it was just, it was actually a very purpose-building moment for Luke on where he needed to go yeah. as a character, and I appreciated that. He needed that. his mentor again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Except to become a good mentor, he needed his yeah. mentor. Yeah. I thought Obi-Wan was gonna come, damn you, Luke. Ray's parents. That's gonna piss that, that's people something, off. That's something that probably pissed some people off too, but, to but I'm like, it's not about finding, it's not about the questions. It's about the journey and the growth of these characters. They're making it way less about who are Ray's parents? Who's a, who's Supreme Leader Snoke, you know? All these questions that people keep fan theorizing on. Uh, I feel like the filmmakers, like, this is a lot more people than just Ryan Johnson's decision. Like, yes, this is yeah. made in Ryan Johnson style, but there's a lot more people on board with how this story is being crafted right now, you know? So the decision to just go, I think it would be more powerful for Ray if she, if they're like, you know, if her parents were just nobodies. They're not this special thing. She doesn't come from a special lineage. That would make it even more compelling argument for her to be with Kylo. Now it's an even stronger journey for when she becomes the ultimate Jedi in part three. Yeah. If it goes that path. It kinda, it's actually at the point where I'm like, 
like, will it go that path? Yeah. <laughs> you know? It kind of lowers the universe in terms of like, oh, so everyone has to be a Skywalker, like connected to them or something like yeah. that. But it was interesting to say, no, it could be just a random anybody. Yeah. So they, they, well, they, I felt like they ended the Skywalker storyline with this one because Carrie Fisher's passed away. Luke Skywalker's now dead. I did like how though they had that beautiful moment at the end with that kid where like you feel like Luke back with that space kid and like who just wants to go yeah. on some journeys and you know get in some trouble. You know that thought of hope and having that with that yeah. kid and just that moment like I felt space like that was Luke. I felt like that was Luke again there from a new hope in terms of you know uh, where he started off on such a young journey with that kid in that moment yeah. looking up in the <laughs> moon. So that was a, a very nice way to, to end the film. You know speaking of humor which no one was speaking of. Finn's storyline, I didn't really care for her in the first half of his storyline. It at, did at start feeling time, yeah. it started feeling like he don't really know what to do with Finn's storyline, but they gave him a really interesting companion who I really love. Rose. I thought her character was great. She was funny. She was sweet, endearing, brave. She added a, a, a presence to this movie. Her interaction with Finn and like I, a tenderness about yeah. her. Yeah. You know, because you meet her when she's just lost her sister, but she's also like really invigorated for the cause. Because she lost her sister. Yeah. And her her teaming up with Finn and doing this mission together. What was that planet they go to? Canto Bite. I love the way they handled I that. Think a little Gorizont. You know, just the gambling style. Yeah. Like. Well, what I was thinking about was even when she's like the worst place I've ever been to. And then it cuts to it and you're like, oh, it's just some like lavish place. It's just bougie. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Vegas, Vegas. For, a, for a planet. Seeing all the creature designs was fantastic. And seeing the kind of the rich. I always feel like you go to like poor places in Star Wars. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you're like, oh, these are like the rich rich folk who Slave love to do them. debauchery and stuff live. Well, yeah, and I love that I love that they took the time to touch on like who do you think can afford to live here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the people supplying all the weapons for the Star War. Yeah. I also yeah. like how they they went into different things like uh, who sells the weapons, uh, the 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 starships, the blasters. Yeah. I also like too and we talked about earlier with Holdo and Poe. I like seeing the rift in the resistance, like how it's not all just cookie cutter. Yeah, let's go beat the bad guys. That's it, and then yeah. we're gonna. There's actually conflict no. within there. They all have the same goals, but they have different ways of trying to achieve it. And I appreciated seeing that conflict in the group. I'm like. Oh, so there are problems. So it does feel more grounded. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not just a movie where, you know, things get resolved so easily. Like there, yeah. are, there is a rift and there are problems, you know, within the resistance. And I, I like seeing that. I think Rogue One helped set up a tone for this in a certain way. Because one thing I said about Rogue One was how I felt like in the word Star Wars, it has, it really has the war vibe. I felt like this had it too in a lot more of the strategic vibe. Like I like the whole master and commander thing going on with uh, the First Order ship just shooting the at them for a long ass time until their damn shields go down they can destroy them yeah. and then trying to figure out a way to escape because they know they're outnumbered it was done more in the war way of strategy instead of just the way the battles were done the action right. sequences i ship rose and finn i prefer i prefer it over finn and ray it I, makes more sense yeah i think i mean again a lot of people are probably not gonna agree with us but i think the reason i like them so much is just because how much they have in common yeah and you know like the ones in sanitation ones you know i was she a janet what, what was, what was I her i forget she, well, she had to watch the escape pod, so they're they're in the like personalities. Yeah, they just mesh, mesh well better other. together, and they have a really good chemistry with each other, and the way they interact with each other, like they're really cute yeah. together. Like I could definitely see these two together, and obviously, you know, we get that moment in the end, and where she saves him too. Like I really thought in the moment, like he was actually gonna die there. I thought they were gonna kill off Finn. I know, yeah, it's like wow, they're, they're actually really ballsy. Yeah. In this yeah. Movie. Yeah, and then the way she too. she heard the ex the Rose ex Machina, where she just comes in to save it, was just so satisfying and so yeah. sweet, and like. The way they're just progressing those two's relationship, like I really appreciate it. And then when we see Ray, like look jealous when she sees the, the yeah. uh, him look at him, like, oh, we're getting love I'll triangle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And another thing that, that struck me about Finn's storyline, specifically Finn and Rose's storyline, you know, I was sharing some of that feeling of, oh, it seems like this is kind of uh, at a different pace than the rest of the story. It seems like a side adventure for part of it. And then by the end of it, I thought that that, that kind of also went to show, like this is a very, this is a very familiar plan. And we're gonna sneak in and mess something yeah. up and, and that's gonna be the key to us winning and it, it doesn't work. Of all the plot lines, that was the one that felt the most like it could have been a rehash. But the way it turns out, it, it's not. Or yeah. at least it oh, wasn't. Oh, nothing ever goes according to plan. I mean, even they rec 
recruit uh, Benicio del Toro's DJ. Yeah. Who, by the way, is DJ great. Yeah. I really felt like it was a cool Benicio del Toro that I performance. You know, like yeah, the Benicio del Toro I love to see. At the same time, he fits so well into the world, and I love this kind of like thief slash coder who breaks out of the jail cell when he wants. Yeah. I've never really seen a. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm just thinking about. I can't really think of too many times where we've seen like a hacker type of character like this. So seeing new types of characters yeah. like into this universe it was cool like it just felt more grounded and he adds to that that gray conversation because he has that moment with finn he shows finn that like you He's know the, the resistance buys the uh oh right right, right. Resistance oh, yeah. buys the weapons too you know like everybody got guns man yeah yeah it's <laughs> just like he's, he's on the in between of all this oh. like he doesn't have a side he's a survivor i mean even though people are going to hate him because what he does even though it was more survival in the moment but you get it was yeah, yeah but also he does have some good moments where he gives back the medallion to rose yeah. like that was a really good moment for me character wise and he's got some cool like cryptic lines yeah too. no definitely a fun fact about benicio del Toro he was actually cast as Darth Maul in a little film called Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace but when George Lucas changed many of the lines or rather you know erased all of Darth Maul's lines because he has like two lines in the whole movie but he said those are was like I'm out he got to be in a Star Wars movie step eventually. up Ray Park it makes me respect Finn's storyline a little bit more because when I think about it in retrospect uh, Finn really screwed over the resistance the whole time this plan was not something ran by he wanted rebellion. to get back to Ray. no he wanted to get back to Ray. he's also trying to help with the whole ship problem so they were looking for the for the coder but because they brought the coder by, the coder was able, to, <laughs> the coder betrays them, and then they're able to really start taking down the ships <laughs> at that yeah. point when they're escaping and everything. He really uh, contributed to making making this worse for them. Him willing to sacrifice himself, like feeling like, no, he has to. I, it made me appreciate that sort of like more of him making mistakes. Like he's really learning here. Yeah, it took you know? this for him to learn. And yeah. also, I mean, he gets to square off with Phasma finally, and Phasma was one of the bummer things about this movie to me because I, yep. I like Gwendolyn Christie a lot, and I think that character looks and sounds awesome in theory for him to get to square off with her was cool my question is this as i thought about that yeah. as I'm like the phasma scene served a purpose for um him. finn, finn yeah. yeah so that's what i mean it's it's less about like who the hell's captain of phasma so i started wondering would i be upset about this if it wasn't gwendolyn christie like if it was just someone under the mask and they didn't like promote this character and it was just in the force awakens at one point and then in this movie they didn't like heavily promote this character would it still upset me i don't think let, it would let me answer that question for you i don't know anything about gwendolyn christie before i saw star wars the force awakens and it upset me big really time. yeah big time but is it because they promoted captain phasma well, i mean definitely here. a little promoted but again just it's the payoff the satisfaction the threat level i just never got the vibe in both films like i just felt like the character was very weak in terms of the gave up very early let the shields down in the force Awakens and in this film one fight scene and she was defeated pretty easily by Finn and I know Finn's a competent warrior but she's Captain Phasma like she's she was in charge of him and I'm not saying that she needs to win the battle <laughs> she... but the battle needs to be tough and hard so that when Finn does win it's like damn how did he beat her that yeah. the, the stakes felt impossible in the moment I never got the sense or the feeling Phasma was All ever right, gonna man, beat him right, so, right, I don't right, know you're just right. me well you're yeah right, right. I do feel like if I didn't know it was going on Christy I would be maybe just less upset but still a little upset because you got to assume that that her character has a status that she must have earned like she's got to be the brienne of the stormtroopers yeah, yeah. she's she got to be easily. that good yeah she's and, the and only stormtrooper with a female voice and they did yeah. do a rollout on that character they were like check out the new stuff for the new yeah. star wars i would be bummed. one stuff. thing i will say i love what they did with the character was her armor when they were using blasters and it was just like bouncing yeah. up for like yeah. now, that was a cool touch use that more to your advantage make her seem more impossible to defeat That's like true. stuff like that or have her like beat off a couple uh guys soldiers on, on the resistance side yeah do something to where we're like how is finn supposed to beat her and then when finally finn does beat her it's like that was a satisfying moment i, I mean, just felt it, it was a wasted it i just felt it was a wasted character i just well, felt that the character had so much more potential than what, what we got and in the grand scheme of things phasma doesn't really affect much of the other characters too exactly that's what i mean so it's like in one way it is looking at that but it, i feel like no matter what at this point you're gonna be like i wish we got something yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or more yeah. like that at least yeah. snow gets oh, some fucking moment. scene you know, <laughs> she got an eyeball. You know. Yeah. Oh, the use of BB-8 was even so better in this movie. Got to include that, man. He got to do some cool stuff when he shows up and takes over that one AT uh, uh, ST. Yeah, that was a badass yeah. moment. He is a character. <laughs> BB-8 yeah. is an actual like got a personality, a character, and also yeah, I love that moment when R2 and Luke reunite. As yeah, well, yes. you know? and even Chewie, <laughs> and even also Chewie and Luke when they reunite. And it's interesting too how you just mentioned about the way they use BB-8 and his personality. It's almost like BB-8, and I know Kate, uh, it was Rogue One. This was 
beyond a long time ago, but I feel like BB-8 and K-2SO are almost like taking over for uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 where they're our favorite droids in our hearts. Yeah. You know, even though K-2SO obviously is gone. The way they're using these new droids and all these ones, I just I really love it and it's just inventive and, yeah. and interesting. I mean, BB-8 like... gets to wear a costume in this movie. That was yeah. really cool. That was freaking I, awesome. I like I R2-D2 and 3PO, but I feel like one of the best things that the new Star Wars films have done in terms of taking advantage of updated effects is enhance the personalities of the droids. Ooh. And I think BB-8 and K-2SO are great examples of that. Honestly, hey, I'm down for, for 3PO. I'm, some, I'm down for some R2-D2. But I'm a little bit more drawn to like K2SO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I know them yeah. well by now. But, yeah. but still, you do appreciate those moments like where Poe is like cutting off C3PO. And also, too, I really love the moment of Luke Skywalker with C3PO and he gives him the wink. Because Luke is yeah. the, honestly the yeah. only one who's ever been nice to C3PO and actually treats yeah. him like he's a human yeah. being, even yeah. though he is a cyborg. But that was one of my favorite moments in the entire film Luke just giving him that eye wink. What like, are some of your favorite spoiler moments of this movie? Put it in the comments below uh, because we love spoilers. Subscribe to The Real Rejects. Don't ever give me a spoiler. Ever. Click that notification bell. Follow us on social media, but beyond anything else we do, I want you to follow us on patreon.com slash Rejects. It's become like a second YouTube channel for us. And download and follow us on the Stardust app. Nothing else to promote except for... Our Instagram's really growing right now. I hope you guys follow us over there. I actually put out a tweet recently. Got 100 uh, something retweets. It was really good. 130. On Instagram? Yeah. Twitter. Twitter. But more importantly, follow Andrew in the valley. Because he is a man who likes to drive and isn't finished. <laughs> <laughs> Movie source channel. It's Andy, Andy man. <laughs> what they Follow say. this guy. To infinity and beyond. Take care. See you on YouTube one of these days.